YouTube, this is Richard Fertig, founder of ShortTermRentalSecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. Hello, hello YouTube, this is Richard, founder of ShortTermRentalSecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. I just got back from a magnificent vacation in one of my favorite spots in the world, which is St. Bart's. So you can see the tan, you can see the hair. It's a little bit crazy, but that's just how I feel. And I wanted to get right into the studio and just give you a review about my experience at the villa in St. Bart's. So before we get started, let me just clarify. This wasn't an Airbnb or VRBO. There's a very um, well-known network of um, villa rental agencies on the island of St. Bart's. And the one that I have always used is called Wimco. I highly recommend them, very professional. They have great access to tremendous villas and a great infrastructure. And as I go ahead and talk about the entire process from start to finish, um, this is what we can all aspire to, right? Like we're not going to be Wimco. We're not gonna have this network of uh, villas. We're gonna have our own properties and our own portfolio. But in terms of the check-in, the communication, the hospitality, we can learn from the best. And so that's the point of this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the booking process, and this is something that I think um, Wimco could do better, and we as hosts can do better, and I'll personalize it. I've identified that I can do this better myself, and what it is is we assume that everybody knows exactly where they want to stay. So for instance, people that are looking in New York City at my Soho property, I assume they want to be in Soho, but that's a big assumption and it's not correct. They may not have any idea what Soho is or what it's close to or why you would choose Soho versus, say, Midtown. And same thing with Wimco and St. Bart's. They didn't tell me where the villa was very well. The photos weren't very great. I had to choose based on what I thought was you know, the best examples. And I did just fine only because I've been there so many times that I know it very well. But we as hosts should not make any assumptions. People that have never been there, you need to tell them why you chose the neighborhood, why you live there, and there's no good or bad. It's just the transparency. So the second thing to consider is the check-in process, and here Wimco absolutely nailed it. They had a personal concierge by the name of Pascal meet us at the airport. He handed us freezing cold Evian waters, which was just so nice and welcome. Friendly, hospitable, smiling, upbeat. I mean, it was just a great way to, you know, get to the vacation spot. And then he lo literally drove us to the villa, walked us through, showed us all the different amenities, and it was just spectacular. So A plus on the check-in. The third thing to talk about is communication. And this is a challenge that I think many hosts, and I know I face personally, insofar as I speak English as my native language and you know, St. Bart's is a French country, so therefore they speak French. And so there's a little bit of a challenge going back and forth between the agent in French and myself in English, and they have broken English and I have broken French. So we as hosts just need to recognize that when somebody's coming from another part of the world, their English isn't perfect and we need to sort of dumb down our response to give them the critical information without a lot of extraneous things that, you know, might confuse them. As for me, St. Bart's and that French West Indian uh, aesthetic is just so perfect. It's, it's minimalist, it's modern, it's laid back, it's efficient, it's just really, really simple and yet it just works. It's like elegant in its own simplicity. And one of the really cool things um, about living in St. Bart's is that they have a lot of indoor-outdoor space and you'll be looking at some of this footage but it's remarkable. I mean the views are spectacular. You're in your living room, there are no walls, there are no windows and so you're in the living room and you're overlooking the, the ocean and it's just unbelievable. So from a design perspective I think it's spectacular. <laughs> So in this particular case, Wimco killed it, absolutely slayed it. In addition to giving us the fresh Evian waters as soon as we landed at the airport, which was really welcome, we went to the villa and we opened the villa fridge and there was a little handwritten note. There was a couple of sodas and beer and a bottle of champagne and it's just, you know, a nice welcome note. That was fantastic. And here's the thing, we talked about this in one of the other videos. They surprised us and that really blew our mind. So the first morning, I got dressed, I was heading out, I was going to go to um, the bakery to get some French pastries, which is just a great breakfast, 
And as I opened the door, I had difficulty opening it. It was because tied on the outside was a little welcome basket with the New York Times Digest, fresh bakery goods, and a little note saying, we hope you had a great first night and enjoy breakfast on us. Now, that little element of surprise was just exactly what we talked about in the other video. It just blew our minds and we were just like, wow, this is incredible. They're so nice and so friendly and so, you know, hospitality focused. It was amazing. And it cost just a couple of bucks, like literally two. Um, the other thing that I want to point out with that, and it gets me thinking, part of the reason I stay at all these different places is because I try and get best practices and ideas and suggestions. You know, that New York Times Digest in printed out format is available to anybody who wants to subscribe. It's not particularly expensive, but it's a really nice thing for somebody who's going to just have a cup of coffee or a little bit of breakfast and want to just flip through some local news. So something I'm contemplating and I just throw it out there for everybody's benefit. Lastly, I like to think about what makes this particular place unique, right? So as somebody were scrolling down, let's say Airbnb, why pick this place? And this place for me is all about the view. It's one of the best views I've ever seen in my life. That's where all the activity is, where the boats coming and going, there's airplanes coming and going, and it's just the most beautiful view as I'm sure you can see. And so for me, as a guy who likes that view, that would be my thumbnail. I'm going to go and stay there because of that view. And it's just over the top, it's A plus, it's just spectacular. Um, when we did get to the villa and Pascal was showing us around, I noticed there was a few things that I learned over the course of my stay that I wish he had pointed out. For instance, um, when it's pitch black, it was impossible to go through the landscape up to where the car was parked. And there was actually a light, but it was outside of the house, and I never thought to look outside. I was playing with all the lights inside, and I couldn't find it. If you look at some of our other videos, we talked about labeling lights. That would have been really helpful also. So little things like that. Uh, I knew that there was cleaning service, and while that was amazing, nobody told me what days of the week or what time. So when the cleaning team showed up, it was always a surprise. Sometimes welcome, sometimes not welcome. Uh, similarly, the pool got serviced. We didn't know what day or at what time, but again, it, it can be an invasion of privacy if you're not expecting anybody. Um, and then finally, I found as I was trying to connect my iPad to the internet that there was no card with where the Wi-Fi password was. And it was some French word, and while it might have been really memorable if you were French or whatever, to me, I couldn't remember what it was, and if you have ever looked at your iPhone, you know, it's all asterisks when you click on the Wi-Fi. So I was sitting here trying to figure it out, and I was looking for a card, and I couldn't really find it, and I was trying to, you know, make this thing happen. I went over to the router, I found it, and I turned it over, and sure enough, there was the password, but maybe a nice white label on the top so that I didn't have to, like, turn it over and have difficulty reading it would have been helpful. Again, really, really nitpicky stuff, but as we try to be the best hosts and the most hospitable and be super hosts, each one of these things just shows that you're paying attention and you're thinking like a guest and not as a host. So in closing, I'm gonna grade this experience an A. It could easily be an A plus with just a few tweaks and attention to the guest experience, but the location, the villa, the island, everything about it was fantastic. And because I was comfortable and had been there before, I was able to you know, navigate and figure it all out. But I think just a couple of minor tweaks and this would be an A plus experience. So I hope you found this video interesting. Please like it, leave feedback, comments, questions, whatever. As I travel, we're gonna be doing more of these. And the reason is because I pick up little tidbits and I wanna share them with everybody because what we're trying to do here is elevate everybody's game, be better hosts, put more money in your pockets, and uh, go ahead and subscribe so you're alerted. We've got videos coming out three days a week now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Until then, happy hosting, and thanks so much for your interest.